it's another beautiful day on the farm. It is spring. Finally. So we went through the whole winter. I've been feeding the cows out of the barn. <clears throat> and I haven't shot any video of it. Um, there's really not much to see. But I thought since I'm winding down, I'm not going to be feeding them out of the barn for very many more days. I'd go ahead and shoot a video of it just to capture it. The, uh, the barns work pretty well this winter. Last uh, year we did round bales out of a feeder. This year we did, I bought in all my hay. This year I baled it all in square bales. So it just made more sense to uh, set aside part of the hay barn as a feeding area. And then I could just walk down there and, and feed them right next to where I had the hay stored. It'll save a lot of time and not have to be out in the cold wind. And it was pretty warm in there, considering the barn's only enclosed on two sides anymore. Good morning, boys. You know, I found if they don't have much to say, it actually means that they're pretty happy. <laughs> if I get a lot of mowing out of them, it means that they are either mad because they didn't like the quality of their hay yesterday, or they're really hungry for some feed. Or who knows what. How are you doing, 18? Eighteen is the heifer that I'm feeding out for a friend. She did pretty well through the winter. I'd say she's got a she's pretty fat. Got a pretty good body condition score. Anybody who'd like to take a crack at what that might be? Four? Five? I don't know. It's considering she's coming off a of winter, I think she looks pretty good. Uh, this guy right here, he's going to the butcher next. He's, uh, he's going on two and a half. March, yeah. So he's he's really aged um, for being able to just not go to the butcher. <clears throat> but him and one other, I just didn't get into the pipeline last fall. So he's kind of uh, late on that. And I don't like to finish him out in the winter. I want to finish him out on grass. So I just kept him, him and... Uh, 8,000 uh, just kept them through the winter I don't see where 8,000 is right now but... anyway we'll get them some feed I did some fertilizer spreading this week I was hoping to get some poultry litter but it seems like everybody's got a contract I had a lead and I contacted him and he said, who told you I'm selling poultry litter? I told him I needed 15 tons. He'd said, he said he'd see what he could do. I never heard it from him again after that. And this place is just a wreck. So this was, <laughs> this is where I keep my feed for the winter and when I finish them. Um, I like to back it in with this little Ford because it makes it a lot easier to steer this kind of hay wagon type steering. But the day that I was putting this in the barn, uh, it started sleeting on me. It's supposed to be no chance of rain and so instead it sleets. So I've got moisture trying to get in the top of that. It didn't have the tarp on at the time. And so instead of just finagling with pushing it in with the tractor, I just backed it all the way in. So then my tractor got boxed in here. So I need to move this truck and maybe push that John Deere back a little to be able to get this little Ford back out this bay. But in the winter, I don't really have much use for this little tractor, so it's just been hanging out. <clears throat>
So I don't know if I've talked about this before, but as much as I wish we were a strictly grass-fed operation, we're not. That was 30 pounds. I was going for 24, so I'm overfeeding them a little this morning. The thing about grass-fed is, I would love to be grass-fed because of however many hundred dollars a year I spend on feed, um, more than a thousand, probably close to two thousand dollars. It's uh, what 19 cents a pound right now, or 17 cents? I think it finally went down a little. 17 cents a pound. And through the winter, I give them four pounds a day per head. And then when I feed them out, uh, when I finish them, I give them five pounds a day for a week, 10 pounds a day for a week, and 15 pounds for two weeks. Um, just to kind of clean out that grass-fed taste and put a little extra fat on them. The feed that I give them comes directly from the co-op. It's a mix of barley, wheat, rye, oats, and corn. And, you know, I keep them on pasture all the time. <clears throat> and they can eat as much fresh grass as they want. But, in the winter they need a little something extra than just hay you know they need that protein and uh, it's not something I would spend money on if I didn't feel like I needed to you know I'm not feeding them grain because I want to be that guy that's feeding his cows out grain you know has a bad reputation right now everybody wants grass-fed beef but what I found is I pretty much do it the way that people have always done it here. You know, they're not in a feedlot, they're not on concrete. This is the only piece of concrete I have. Um, they're, they're out on pasture and they're happy and they get a little bit of grain. And then through the summer months when it's grass and they're not being finished, like I only finish two at a time. So the rest of them, they're just, they're just on pasture doing their thing. I rotate them. And, We'll see that probably in, in another video. This is Bud right here. He's the lead and he's the smart one. You say they all crowded that one over there. He knows if he waits just a second, he'll pretty much get this trough all to himself. Bud's a good one. He comes when I call and I can get him to move the herd into places that they wouldn't normally want to go. Like for instance, there's a place between two pastures that's separated by a, a strip of woods and a ravine. Uh, they wouldn't normally follow me through there because they're just they're just reluctant. But I can get Bud to go, and then they'll follow Bud. So he's a keeper. But look at the green. Just beautiful. I'll take around this side and show you. My one regret of feeding them out on this system this year was I didn't pay enough attention to the water drainage. <clears throat> and most of the winter I was making them walk around through here to get into the front. And uh, they just destroyed it. They just absolutely destroyed it. I tried bringing in wood chips and uh, building it up but it didn't last long they just tore it up again 
So when the weather finally warmed up, I opened up this side door and they've been using it and uh, it doesn't seem to have the same problem. But next year I'm going to do it differently so that I don't have to use that bay. Instead I'm going to use the middle of the barn to feed them out and then they can just come and go through this gate right here. At least that's the plan. And you can see we are down to just nothing. We got this mound here and that mound there and these few round bales that I'm saving for when I put them back out on pasture to ease them into grass, make sure they have some hay the first couple weeks at least when they're on grass because uh, it'll overwhelm their system. So if they need some hay still. But yeah, this is... So what we gave them yesterday and they're just getting really picky as we move into spring they know that grass is sitting right on the other side of that temporary fence just waiting for them and uh instead of making them eat that <laughs> they're just not real happy about it But maybe if I fluff it up for him just nice enough, I can talk him into giving it a try. I give them up to eight square bales a day. And there are days that I come in and they've just cleaned the floor. And there are other days I come in, it looks like this, like they've just pushed it around and they're refusing to eat it. So what I typically do is if it, if it sits like this, if I come back this evening and they've still refused to eat any of this, I'll go ahead and pitch it over the rail and I'll just start over with fresh bales. It could just be something, I mean, I've, all these pastures got bailed, so the way these bales are grouped is from a certain pasture, a certain part of a pasture is all lumped together. So if I start hitting a patch of bales, let's say it has a bunch of broom sedge or something that they don't want, then they're just gonna be picky about those bales. Once I move through them, I might hit a pocket of Bermuda or something and then they just eat it all up so it seems to be how it goes the other thing I tried is they get picky I'll switch to a different stack you know because I had one two three four stacks so I could kind of go between them and figure out which ones they wanted this stack they loved for a while and then I hit a wall back here and they don't like any of that maybe I'm being too nice to them, I don't know. <clears throat> but they need to eat, they need to gain weight. I want them to be happy. I did find the bills that come from underneath that are still green. They love those. That's one thing I would do differently. Last year I tried to put space between the stacks so that there was air circulation and moisture wouldn't build up. But they, are really picky about the bales on top, the crust, the crust of the piles, the bales on the edges. Um, so next year I'm probably going to try to do one big, one big stack continuous, and that way there'll be more of those green bales on the inside that they seem to like.
tell you, they don't want that. They don't want anything that has a lot of stems. So somebody was saying this two by four and two by two setup wasn't gonna be strong enough to withstand the winter and I would say all in all they were right. If you can see this, this, uh, this one here and this one here got spliced in after this one shattered. Uh, this one's been replaced, 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 this one's been replaced twice. These are original. It's just this one section right here seems to be the one they really lean into. The rest of them held up fine. Um, but boy, this one. So this is, uh, when I started replacing these, I started using white oak scraps. This is white oak. And these, all these uprights are white oak, except this one. They, um, they have a harder time breaking through the white oak than they do that pine. All right, guys, you need just room for two. I feed them up to eight square bales a day. This is how I meter it out to them. Just depending on what they eat, how much uh, empty space I find when I come in in the morning. And then I come back out in the evening and do it again. Not gonna like this one because it's on top. So let's see, they should be on hay for another last year. They went on grass on April 9th, and today's the uh, April 1st. So I don't have much further to go. Watch out, boys. All right, will you eat that? Yeah, look at them. They don't even touch that. Maybe I ought to go ahead and fork some of it over. Otherwise, they're all going to be eaten out of this one spot. What's wrong with this hay, bud? Huh? It's a fat one right here. Look at him, 06. He's uh he was a spring calf. So he is just about to turn two. I bet you he's 22 months old. And he stayed nice and fat through the winter. He's a little pig. 10 here, this black one looking at me. I call him skinny. He has terrible body condition. He's always had terrible body condition. I don't know what his deal is. He's usually the last one to the trough. Sometimes I have to go out and get him. He's been wormed twice. Uh, treated with two kinds of wormer last time. I don't know what, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if it's just his genetics or what. But even the guy that sells me these calves, uh, I had him come out one day and check him out. Um, he knows a lot more about the their health and wellness than I do. When I have a problem with one of them acting weird, he's the one I call. Anyway, we looked at him and you know he had he obviously had been eating hay. He had a full belly. He eats. He just doesn't doesn't gain weight and his hip bones stick out. And his pockets usually sunken. 
So he's not full full. I love having these lightweight bales. These bales came out light this year because my my twine tensioner on the baler was messed up. So these bales are 30 pounds. Some of them are less. But they sure are easy to move around. All right. Is this gonna work for you guys? What you doing, Bubba? Oh, that's double zero. So this is the cousin of the other one. This one's going to the butcher with him. They came onto the farm together a year and a half ago. And they're the only ones left from that group. He's a big boy. Why don't you go eat your hay there, bud? What is it? Huh? Why don't you go eat? You smell something? You longingly watching the green grass grow? About two weeks, you'll get all you want. Go eat your hay, silly. Oh, you like the smell of my glove, huh? You wonder what the camera is? Come here. Yeah, it's all right. Come here. Come here. Alright, chicken. See you later. Anyway, so that's it. I give them some grain, I give them some hay, I check their water twice a day. And they're just they're just stuck. They have this pen and then uh Behind that milk barn, there's a there's another pen that's about three acres divided in half, but they have access to both halves. So they've got I don't know four acres that they're stuck on all winter. But hey, it's better than standing on concrete in the feedlot, right? It's not like they're crowded or anything. They got plenty of room. But it's seeming to be a beautiful spring. We had four and a half inches of rain last week. And uh, you can definitely tell we don't have a drought anymore. Green grass. So you guys take care, I'll see you around.